Say, I'm a doer. Yeah, say, I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Good job. I sow my seed into your kingdom. Give my best unto you, Lord. And as my harvest overtakes me, I won't stop. I'll do it some more. Because I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the Word of God. I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the Word of God. 
ready for this next one? Good. Cause through you I can do anything And I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength And nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open And strongholds are broken I am living by then just jump around a little bit. And sing out. Not gonna live. I'm not gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Cause deep down, cause deep down I that you're here with me and I know that you can do anything because through you I can do anything and I can do all things but it's you who gives me strength nothing is impossible through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. See, I'm not gonna live. I'm not gonna live by what. Not it. Sing it again. 
Jesus, I don't need to understand. I don't need to understand all about the workings of your plan. I don't have to always see everything that lies ahead of me. But as long as I can know that I'm in the power of your hands, I can't. so thankful for this time of worship, this time of praise. I pray over these kids that they would receive something new from you today, Father. I thank you that you have a good lesson for them to learn from, where your word is involved, and they will learn how to grow their faith stronger and stronger. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, you can have a seat. Enjoy the wonderful lesson ahead, and we'll see you next time. The word of the day is... In order to have real faith, we must abide in God and His Word. It's offering time again! Oh, man, offering time's the best. I have a question for you. Have you guys heard of faith? You have? And you have faith? Well, praise God, that's awesome! But I have another question. Have you heard of copycat faith? Yeah, it's not something you want to have. Sometimes people like to copy what other people say, and that's called being a copycat. Let me show you what I mean. But I need a volunteer. All right, come on up here. Oh wow, I'm so excited. Oh wow, I'm so excited. I, I, I mean, like really, this is so cool. I mean, I'm really, this is so cool. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you just... This is a... He... Are you just... Uh... Uh... See, that's called being a copycat, and it's not very respectful, and it's not something you should do. I'm sorry, Miss Hannah. It's okay. The thing is, though, is that we can do that with our faith, and that's not a good thing. Sometimes, like when we're giving in the offering, we may do it just because we think it's the right thing to do, or you might see someone else do it, like mom or dad, a sibling, or even a friend. You might see them do it and, and give in the offering, and you'll think, oh, well, they're doing it, so I guess I should too. But when we do that, are we using real faith, or are we doing it just to do it? Right! It's not real faith. That's called imitation faith, or as we said before, copycat faith. And there's absolutely no faith in that. And we know, or we know now, that giving should be done in faith. But how do we give faith? Well, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And now that we know, let's dive into the word and see what we can set our faith on. Do you guys have your Bibles with you? All right, good. Me too. Mine's right here. So let's see, what can we set our faith on? I have one bookmarked that would be perfect. You guys know where Malachi is? Well, go to Matthew in the New Testament and then back up one book and you'll be in Malachi. Malachi 3 and we're going to go to verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Did you guys hear that? That's so awesome. So, if we act on the word and we give our tithes in faith, 
then God will bring to you such a blessing that you won't even have enough room to contain all of it. Wow. So when we tithe in faith and abide in his word, that lets God move in our life and bless us. And doing that is real faith. Hey kids, it's time to read our Bible verse today. Do you have your Bibles? Go get them, I'll wait. Okay, today's verse is in Romans. Do you know where Romans is? That's right, the New Testament. Okay, it's Romans 3, 3 through 4a, and it says, For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. That is so true. That means whatever others think, it doesn't really matter. And we know that the Lord's faithful and his word is true 100% of the time. And don't forget, Faith Life children read their Bibles every day, Monday through Friday. All right, let's talk real faith. Real faith is having a relationship with God. That means knowing his heart, his will for your life, and his voice. You know, we have relationship with people, relationships with people in our lives, like our mom, our dads, friends, family members. And you know, we know their voices and we can recognize them. We know their hearts, we know what they like to do, and we like to spend time with them. And when we have a relationship with the Lord, we spend time with him, we get to know him. God wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to talk to us and he wants to help us. He wants to give us wisdom and direction, all because he loves us. I'd like to share with you a story that Brother Moore told us in his Real Faith series. Brother Moore shared that he had been teaching about 20 times a week. And during this time, he began to have some voice issues to the point where he even actually lost his voice at times. Brother Moore made good confessions. He confessed that his voice was strong and that he was healed, but he continued to have voice problems. You see, Brother Moore liked to sleep at night with the fan on and his t-shirt off. As he was having these voice problems, he continued to make good confessions, but along the way, the Lord dealt with him that he needed to turn off the fan and put a t-shirt on. Well, Brother Moore really liked sleeping with the fan on and a t-shirt off, so he just continued to make good confessions and unfortunately still had voice problems. Eventually one day, Brother Moore decided, okay, I'm gonna turn off the fan and I'm gonna put on a t-shirt. You know what happened when he did? That's right, no more voice problems. He was better because he heard from God and he did what the Lord told him to do. So, boys and girls, was it real faith when Brother Moore was making confessions? That's right, he shared with us that he wasn't in real faith when he was just making confessions. But then he said he had to listen to God and he had to do what the Lord said. Real faith means hearing from God and doing what he says. Please join with me in a prayer as we ask the Lord to help us to do the right things and to have real faith. So if you'll bow your head and then repeat after me, we're gonna say a prayer together. Father God, enlighten us, teach us, give us understanding to discern and to distinguish between fake faith and real faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. We know you've heard our prayer, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. All right, boys and girls, it's confession time. You ready? All right, repeat after moi. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. 
Good. All right. Now, are you ready for the next one? Get your running feet ready. Get your hands in position. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. I'm good looking. And I'm very rich, like you're taking all the money out of your pockets. And a major blessing. Good job. All right. You got your hands ready? I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the word of God. Perfect. You guys have your Bibles with you? Because you got one more. This is mine. All right, repeat after me. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can be what God says I can be. Awesome. If you guys keep doing that, you'll be acting in real faith. Hey, hey, boys and girls, look what I got. Ba -ba -da -da. I have this grapevine. What's on my grapevine? Grapes. There's a lot of grapes on this grapevine, and they are big and juicy grapes. So why would I have this grapevine with all of these big and juicy grapes, you ask? Well, let me tell you. So I have a scripture at the top of this board and I'm gonna read it aloud to you. If you have your Bible, which I hope you do, you can look it up with me. It is found in the book of John, chapter 15, verse four. It's in your Bible and I'm gonna read it right here. It says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Wow, I heard a lot about abiding. Have we talked a lot about abiding before? We might have, but you might not remember exactly what abiding means. And so I want to tell you that this verse is talking a lot about abiding with God. And what does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked because that is why we are here with this big bunch of grapes. Now, boys and girls, I heard a lot about branches and fruit and vines as well in that verse. And do you remember how real faith it bases its faith on God's word because it's real and God is real. And when we have real faith, boys and girls, we trust God in his word. But to do that, he's asking us to abide in him. Abide, you ask? I know, right? We're gonna talk about it. So to abide in something means to live in. Who lives inside of you when Jesus is your Lord? He lives inside of you, and you want to abide in Him. We want to always be under what God is saying and with Him in His Word. And when we do that, what does the scripture say? Let's look again. It says, and you will bear fruit. That is so cool. So we want to bear fruit for God. We want to be lovely, and we want to do all the things that God is asking us to do, but we can't do it unless we abide but how do we abide? We're getting there, I promise. So we're gonna pick some juicy fruit off this tree because these fruits, these grapes are attached to this vine, right? Yes, they are, they're attached, they're feeding off of the vine to grow big and strong, just like us. So let's pick a grape, shall we? We shall. All right, I am going to pick this grape. Look, there is something in here. I think this might be a clue as to how we can abide. Well, how am I gonna get this out? I give a trick. We're gonna cut it out. Let's see what it says in here. All right. Okay, there's something in here. Come out. Let's see. Now. A way that we can abide with God is, ooh, in this picture. Can you see my picture here? This is a little boy reading his Bible. 
When we read our Bible, boys and girls, we are abiding in Christ. We are spending time with Him and we are putting His Word in our heart. And that will help us to bear much fruit. All right, let's see what else. Do you want to pick another juicy grape? Me too. Let's see. Hmm, they got little ones, big ones. I think I'm gonna go for a big one, a big, ripe, juicy one right here. Got it. There's something else in here. This is a clue as to how we can abide in Christ. Abiding in Christ is a real thing, boys and girls. God wouldn't ask us to do something that we can't do. And he's given us instructions in his word on how to abide. Let's see what it says. Okay, here is another clue. A piece of paper. It's like a treasure. God's word is like a treasure. Let's open it up. <gasps> Look, can you see this picture? Look at these little kids. It's got some kids and it looks like they're dancing and singing. There's music notes on here. They're praising God. Boys and girls, when we praise God and we sing to him and we can dance and sing and praise God, we are abiding in him. And boys and girls, that is honoring God and spending time with him and knowing him. And when we do that, boys and girls, we know his voice. And when we hear God's voice, when we're spending time with him, abiding in him, that gives us real faith. And he knows that we need our faith to follow him. Let's pick another fruit. Da, 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 da. Which one? Let's see. I think we should pick one at the top. They might be juicier at the top. Let's see. Here's one. Oh, come here. Oh, he didn't want to come off. There's another clue. Let's see, this is another way that we can abide with Christ. So, so far we can read our Bible, we can praise God and sing. These are all spending time with God. What do you think this one's gonna be? Hmm, let's find out. Ooh, grapes are so delicious, aren't they? And juicy. Okay, Ooh. I'm gonna let you see it first. I can't see it yet. Can you see it? Oh, you saw it first. This is a church. Boys and girls, a way that we can abide in Christ is by going to church. God calls us to fellowship with one another and to belong to a church and to be in the church body. That's a way that we can abide in Christ. Boy, this is awesome. I think we got some more fruit to pick. Let's see. Huh, I think I'm gonna go for, oh, I think this big juicy one, hold on. Oh, got it. Yes. How else can we abide in Christ? Now remember, abiding means spending time with him, staying connected. Whoa, boys and girls, that one popped right, hold on. Here we go, let's see, whoa. That was a juicy grape. What is this one? How can we abide in Christ? What is this little boy doing? He's praying. Boys and girls, when we pray and we talk to God and we listen to God, we're listening to his voice and our faith is growing because we're hearing from God and that becomes real in our heart. So I want to read this scripture to you one more time because I think it's going to mean even more to you now, now that you know what abide means. So I want you to listen. It says, Abide in me. We're going to do all those things, right? Abide in me and I in you. Pause. Boys and girls, when we abide in Christ, he promises that he will be there. He will be there with us. As the branch can't bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Boys and girls, these grapes can't grow without a vine. And boys and girls, we can't grow in our faith without God and abiding in him. We wanna stick close to the vine, just like these grapes are sticking close to this vine and they will flourish and bear much fruit. 
Boys and girls stick to the vine. We want to abide in Christ. Lucy, are you sleeping in class? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Hannah. I'm just so sleepy today. I didn't sleep very good last night. I can tell. It seems like you're having a hard time staying awake. Yeah, I just, I just couldn't go back to sleep. I was in bed and it was all dark mm -hmm. and I had my teddy bear and then boom, crash, bang, thunder, lightning, rain mm -hmm. on my window. It got so scared. I just started trembling and I couldn't go back to sleep so I ran to my parents' room and just got in their bed and shook all night because I was so scared of the noise. Well, Lucy, that's no good. That's not any fun to not be able to sleep at night. We no. need sleep for sure. But did you know that there's nothing to be afraid of? Well, it was just so loud and it startled me. I was frightened. Well, I can understand that. It's happened to me before too. You know, God is with us all the time and he always protects us. In fact, I think I have some really good trip scriptures that could help you out. Would you like to hear them? Oh, yes, please, Miss Hannah. Awesome. The first one is in Psalms 4, 8. And it says, let me find it in here. Here it is. It says, I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Means he keeps us safe all the time. And then there's another one. There's a bunch of really good ones. <laughs> there are lots of good scriptures. This one is in Proverbs 3:24. And this says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Sweet sleep? Mm -hmm. That's not what I had last night. Mm -mm. But he gives us that promise. Let me read you one more. This okay. one is in Psalms 121, verse 3. It says, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Do you know what slumber means? Um, hmm, no, I don't. <laughs> well, slumber means sleep. And the he they're talking about is God. God never sleeps. He always watches over us and protects us all night long. Keeps us from anything that would try to harm us, even a storm. Well, Miss Hannah, mm -hmm. how are those scriptures gonna help me not be afraid? Well, real faith in God produces real results, and real faith has actions. So a lot of the time, whenever we're in faith, God will show us something to do, an action that shows that we are in faith on the outside. It's like the story in Mark 2, <laughs> one through five. Mm, you want me to tell it to you? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> okay, well, Jesus, he was teaching in this house. And it was so full. I mean, so full that not even one more person could fit in there. Whoa, that's yeah. really full. Super full. And then there were these four guys. They were friends and they had a friend who was paralyzed. It means he couldn't walk. Oh, oh no. I know, but they knew that if they could get him in front of Jesus, he would be healed. So, you wanna know what they did? What? They climbed to the top of the roof and they tore a hole in the roof, and then they lowered their friend down in front of Jesus. Wow. And in the Bible, it says that Jesus saw their faith. Our faith can be seen by our actions. So when Jesus saw all the things that they did, he told them that they had great faith, and he healed their friend. You know, I'm kind of thinking that you should ask God to show you what actions you can take to be in real faith. Well, that sounds like being a doer of the word. It absolutely uh, is. And I want to be a doer, so I'm going to pray right now. Okay. Father God, I ask you to help me and show me what actions I need to do so that I can be in faith and not be in fear anymore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now that you've prayed, we'll stand in faith that God is going to show you exactly what to do because he always answers our prayers. Yes, he does. And you know what, Miss Hannah? What? I feel like the Lord's already showing me what I'm supposed to do. Praise God. Mm -hmm. What is it? 
Well, he wants me to read those scriptures out loud every night before bed. Mm -hmm. And if something startles me or if there's a loud noise, he wants me to stay in my bed mm -hmm. and trust him instead of getting afraid and running to my parents' room again. Well, praise God, Lucy, that's so awesome that God already showed you exactly what to do. And you know, when you are meditating on His Word and reading those scriptures every night, you are abiding in God and His Word. When we abide in Him, there's peace and protection, answers and direction for what we should do. Well, I am so excited to abide in God and His Word. You know what? Lucy, I think we should pray over your sleep. And boys and girls, if you have ever dealt with fear or not being able to sleep because you're afraid, why don't you pray this with us? Let's close our eyes and you can repeat after me. Say, Father God. Father God. I trust you. I trust you. And I know. And I know. That you are my protector. That you are my protector. You never sleep. You never sleep. You always keep watch. You always keep watch. Over me. Over me. And keep me. And keep me. Away. Away. From anything. From anything. That could harm me. That could harm me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For your protection. For your protection. And your peace. And your peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. His word is like a recipe. It's written down for you and me. And when we bake it as we should, it always turns out good. If we don't, we'll wish we had and wonder why it turned out bad. We should use some common sense and not leave out ingredients. I'd say there's one above the rest. It's faith, of course, you pass the test. Can't be shaken, must be stirred mixed with God's anointed word. No, there is no substitute. Faith's importance is absolute. Without faith, we can't please God and everything we make flawed. So trust in God's anointed word and do exactly what we've heard. So trust in God's anointed word and do exactly what you've heard. Ooh la la, it has its perks, cause God is real and real faith works. Hey boys and girls, I'm so glad you're here because I was just about to feed Dewar the dog some puppy chow. But I have two puppy chows here. They look the same, don't they? Well, I'm trying to decide which one to feed Dewar the dog, so, huh. Huh, <laughs> yeah, one of these, I will just give you a hint, one of these people will really like and one of these puppies would really like. You want to look inside? See if you can tell. Can you tell which one people would like and which one puppies would like? Oh, yeah. If you had smell vision at your house, you guys, this one is for puppies. This one is the real puppy chow. We've been talking a lot today about what is real and what is fake faith. And boys and girls, I thought it would be a lot of fun to have real puppy chow and people puppy chow, that's kind of the fake puppy chow. So we're gonna save this for do or the dog, but we are gonna learn how to make people puppy chow today. Would you like to know how to make it? You do. All right, let's put this off to the side and we'll feed Dewar in just a minute here. All right, let me show you. Now, to make a snack, boys and girls, you're gonna need four ingredients, but before you get your four ingredients, you're gonna need to ask your mom. Make sure and ask your mom if it's okay if you make the puppy chow, or you could ask her to help you make it, and I know she would really like to make it with you. So, what you're gonna need, first up, some peanut butter, some cereal. This is rice square cereal. You're gonna need some of that. You are gonna need some chocolate chips. Can you see my chocolate chips in there? Chocolate chips. And you're going to need a bowl. That's not part of the ingredients. Don't count that as an ingredient. Then you're also going to need some powdered sugar. So here's our, here's our lineup. Peanut butter, chocolate chips, rice cereal squares, and powdered sugar. You can do this. Now, once you have all of your ingredients, what you're going to want to do is 
take your peanut, your chocolate chips, and you're gonna need half a cup of chocolate chips. We're gonna take our peanut butter, and we are going to put one fourth of a cup of peanut butter. Now, Miss Megan, I'm gonna tell you that one of my favorite snacks is this puppy chow. I can't get enough. It is the most delicious thing to me. So I can look at my peanut butter and say, that's a fourth of a cup, because I have made this a lot of times. Wow, what you're gonna wanna do, can you see that? Peanut butter, chocolate chips. But we need to melt it up. When you mix your peanut butter and your chocolate chips together, make sure you put them in a bowl that can go in the microwave. Very important, ask your mom. All right, so we are going to put this in the microwave for one minute. Easy so far, isn't it? All right, let's put it in the microwave here. And what do you get? <gasps> Look at this! Oh, this is like melty peanut butter chocolate. And I know you're gonna be tempted to just lick that spoon. I know you. So, peanut butter and chocolate, done. You're gonna wanna take your cereal here. We're gonna pour it in this bowl. How many of you think that snack craft is the best kind of craft. I know some of you are raising your hands out there. Then you're gonna wanna take some, or you're gonna take your peanut butter and your chocolate, and we're gonna drizzle it all over this cereal. But you know what? How much cereal did we put in this bowl? I forgot to tell you. I put four and a half cups of cereal. Four and a half cups. I'll give you a hint, it's about half a box a box. I told you, Miss Megan really likes to make puppy chow. All right, now look here. I've got this chocolate on the cereal. We're gonna mix it up. I'm gonna cover all the cereal. It makes kind of a loud noise. Aren't you glad that people have their own puppy chow snack and dogs have their own puppy chow? You never want to feed your dog chocolate, so this is not for dogs. And we don't ever want to eat put real puppy chow, do we? Ooh, yucky. All right, so I think we got this really mixed up nice and good. Finishing touch. Let's tap that, tap that off. The finishing touch is 3 fourths a cup of powdered sugar. Ow. Powdered sugar kind of goes everywhere, so if you make a mess, be sure to clean it up. Otherwise, your mom might be like, I don't think you should make puppy chow anymore. You say, no, I have to make puppy chow. All right, here we go. So clean your mess up. Oh, okay, this is about three-fourths of a cup, and I'm gonna sprinkle it on there. There we go. I told you this is easy peasy. Put this guy away. Let me get my spoon out. This is like. <laughs> what if your friends came over and you're like, oh, you guys are hungry? I'll just whip you up a snack. It's a pretty good snack to whip up for all your friends. I think they would be very thankful to have a good snack. Now, boys and girls, when we spend time with God and we abide in Him, our faith grows. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when we spend time with God, our faith is real because God is real, boys and girls. And we want to make sure that we are abiding in him so that our faith continues to grow. No matter where we are, we can have the peace of God, we can have the wisdom of God because we can hear his voice. All right, here we go. So, whew, that is nice and mixed up. Awesome. Now, I think Miss Megan is gonna have a snack. Mmm, y'all, this is some good puppy chow, boys and girls. I think I might make a batch for myself, and then I might make a batch for my friends. What do you think? Oh, I'm just kidding. Boys and girls, don't really eat out of the bowl. Your mom wouldn't want you to do that, but it's just me today. Oh. I could really just eat this whole bowl and be totally excited. So there is the people puppy chow. Mm, I can't wait for you to try this. You guys have to try this. So we don't want to end today 
without really feeding Dewar the dog. So we have our puppy chow here. Mmm. Me and Miss Megan's puppy chow. Now let's get Dewar some puppy chow, shall we? All right. We don't want to leave Dewar out. He's such a good dog. Let's put that over there. All right, boys and girls. Well, I had so much fun with you today cooking. I hope that you have a great time making your puppy chow and abiding in Christ as you grow real faith. Doer? Yes. Oh, Doer, you look a little, uh, <sighs> not so great. Soggy? Yeah, a little soggy. I feel a little soggy. <laughs> I bet. I had a very rough night. <laughs> oh, was it because of the storm last night? <laughs> Did we keep you up? It's not not because of the storm. It's mostly because the tree fell on my doghouse and then oh. it broke a hole in the roof. Ooh. And so I was trying to sleep in a puddle all night. Yeah, I can <sighs> tell. It's very hard to sleep when you're in a puddle and you're thinking to yourself, hmm. I do very much wish I was not in a puddle. Yeah, I wouldn't want... That would want... be very nice. Well, I like sleeping on a dry bed. Yes, you were not in a puddle. It was nice, wasn't it? It was nice. <sighs> That's no good to sleep on a puddle. No, it is a problem. It mm -hmm. is a catast... A catast... A dog catastrophe. Mm -hmm. a, it is... A dog -aclism. <laughs> It's so, a dog -aclism. So, Dewar, what do you what do you think we should do about this? What do we do? What do we do? We should do... Well, you know what we always did? Do the word of God. We should right. do the word of God. Yes. We should. This is, this is an opportunity to use our big faith. Yes. Yes. This so, is an opportunity uh, to use our faith and do the word of God. Uh, you shall uh, speak unto this man. Uh, so we should speak to the doghouse. Speak to it. Say, doghouse, be whole. Uh, do, do, be not have a hole. Don't have a uh, be holy, unholy, be uh, <clears throat> be healed. Um, I don't, I don't know that that really applies to... The doghouse, uh, exactly. Okay, uh, maybe not that. Um, no, let's say uh, God will supply all your needs, right? So, right, he will. Um, he could supply my needs. We could speak, and, and, and a truck full of doghouses could drive by the house, and a doghouse could, on wheels, just to slide off the back yes. and just slide into the backyard. And slide I did that. It's my new doghouse. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that we can believe for that either. I mean, can have you heard the Lord tell you that that was gonna You don't happen? think I can believe for that? Kids, you don't think I can believe for that? No. I mean, you can't have real faith that the Lord would do that. Right, I, kids? I, I can't have real, why not? I have faith, I'm a doer of the word of God. I have, I have, I have faith. And if you have faith like a mustard seed, you know. A... Yes, that's true. But I mean, has the Lord told you to do any of these things? To believe for any of these things? Uh... Because faith comes by hearing, right? Right. Faith comes by hearing. And, and you, from hearing the word of God, right. from hearing testimony, and from hearing the voice of the Spirit in your spirit. You know, right. the Holy Spirit will speak to you on the inside. Not like an audible voice. It's not like, doer, I am the Lord. It's not like that. No. no. It's like a still small voice on the inside. Right. And the Holy Spirit can speak to you. And he speaks to me all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so have you heard him tell you to believe for any of those things? Uh, maybe. Let me check. Okay. Mm. I can't, I can't uh, listen to my spirit while you're looking at you. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not really getting anything about that. No, it's a dumb. No, not so much? No, that, uh, that might have just been my idea. That's very possible. Mm. I mean, but if you want to know a cool testimony I have, <gasps> A kind testimony. Of testi yeah. A testimony is great. A testimony might build my faith. Right. This is hearing I will um, incline good things my ear. that God has done for you. <laughs> Other year. And uh, and it actually happens to do with this the situation too. So, are you ready? Oh, that is very good. Let's hear the testimony. Okay. Listening. So, a while back, the Lord had prompted me. Right. The Holy Spirit had prompted me yes. to set money aside <gasps> into my savings account. Did you do it? I did. <gasps> Very and good. If you do the word of God, that is where real faith comes in. You right, hear from exactly. the Lord and then you do, oh, and I then see. you do it. The yeah, yeah. So, the truck and the, yeah, yeah, go on. <laughs> so, when he told me to do this, when I was prompted, uh -huh. then I kind of had the thought, I wonder what this is for. <gasps> I have no idea what this is for, but 
did it anyway. So you because took I knew a step it was the right of faith, thing. even though you didn't even know what it was for? Exactly. Very good. You yeah. are a doer of the word of God. <laughs> well, praise God. Maybe you should be called doer the human. Mm, I think I like Hannah the human better. But anyway, so now I know what the Lord, what the Lord had me you know, You know what it's for? Mm -hmm. That is a wonderful testimony. Yeah. My faith is built up because I know that I can do what the word Lord says to me and then eventually I'll get the direction just like you did. Yes, right. and my doghouse problem will be solved. Right. Well, well, do you, do you want to know what the money was for? Oh, Lord? yes, very much. I do. And put on my heart to What was it? What was it for? Well, it's, it's for your doghouse. <gasps> wow. That is wonderful! Isn't it? So you mean that the Lord had already made provision for my doghouse before it even before it even broke? Right. Before it even busted? Right, before it even busted. God loves me so much. Yes, he does. And he had a plan all along. He that just prompted me, and then I listened. I was a doer of what he said, a doer of the word of God. Doer the human. <laughs> doer the human. Wait, Hannah the human. Anyway. And now there's provision for your doghouse, and you are taken care of. Well, glory to God. That is a wonderful testimony for both of us. Yes. So I'm thinking maybe now we should go do some doghouse shopping? Shopping! Let's go. Boys and girls, we've been talking about real faith. And if you want to have this kind of real faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over your life, then pray this prayer after me. Father, I thank you so much for all that you have done for me. And I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me, to pay for all of my sins. And Father, I believe in the name of Jesus that you raised him from the dead on the third day. And I confess Jesus as Lord and Savior over my life. Thank you so much, Father, for all that you have done for me and all that you're going to do from this day forward. And I confess now that I am forever changed in the name of Jesus. Boys and girls, if you just prayed that prayer with me, then now you are saved and you can go on this journey of real faith and grow every single day as you continue to spend time with him and grow in his word with him. Hey boys and girls, were you watching for the word of the day? How many times did you see it? That's right, great job. Be sure to tune in next time where you can be watching for the word of the day and learning about God and his promises. And, and, and.